Democrat Glenn Ivey represents Maryland's 4th Congressional District, one that borders the nation's capital. He's also one of the nearly 80 new members of the U.S. House in the 118th Congress. A former state's attorney and public service commissioner, he told C-SPAN about why he was already familiar with working on Capitol Hill before winning his 2022 election. Well, I first came to Capitol Hill in 1987. I went to work for uh, Congressman John Conyers, who was one of the co-founders of the Congressional Black Caucus. And at that time, he was the subcommittee chair on the House Judiciary Committee. And I think he uh, around then became a committee chair for, a, it was called government operations at the time. Uh, so I started then, left the Hill for a while, went to the U.S. Attorney's Office in D.C., came back to the Senate to do the Whitewater hearings that were starting up. And I was on the banking committee staff there for two years. Then uh, I went to the leader's office, who was Tom Daschle at the time, for the thompson Glen hearings and uh, did some other substantive work there as well. Remind our viewers of the Whitewater investigation. Whitewater started out as an issue about uh, the Clintons and whether they'd gotten uh, an illegal loan, essentially, uh, from a, a, an SNL bank that existed in Arkansas. Uh, it became pretty clear uh, relatively quickly that that wasn't the case. So uh, the Republicans won control of the Senate. Uh, it was 1994, Gingrich and that tsunami. They won the House and the Senate. The Senate Banking Committee became the Senate Whitewater Committee. And it was kind of off to the races from their perspective after that. So they did two years of, of additional hearings. Um, and then um, two years after that, Lincoln Bedroom, all kinds of other things. But at the end of the day, it ended up not resulting in much. You've spent a lot of time up here then. As now a member of Congress, have you learned anything new or different, maybe something that has surprised you? Well, the people are very different. I mean, the tenor of, of the Hill is, is uh, it's, uh, much more divided. It's, it's much more, um, in some ways, venomous. Um, and, you know, there are members that are here in the Congress, I won't be specific, but who really espouse um, I think borderline kind of nutty things. So it's a, it's a very different place than it was, you know, 25, 30 years ago. Who or what made you decide to run for this seat? Well, I'd been looking at this for a while. I'd worked on the Hill, as I mentioned, and enjoyed being on Capitol Hill. I'd been elected as, a, it's called state's attorney in Prince George's County. It's like the DA job and done that for two terms. Uh, but I enjoyed politics, I enjoyed public service. This position came open and I decided to run. Do you have any political mentors? I'm sorry? Political mentors? Oh yeah, I was very, very fortunate on that front. Um, certainly uh, Senator Paul Sarbanes, who hired me at the beginning of the, uh, the Whitewater hearings, um, that was, was one of the best for me. Eric Holder was one of my bosses at the U.S. Attorney's Office. He's been a continuing mentor for me uh, over the decades now. So I've, I've really been blessed on that front. What have they taught you, or is there any adage that they would say that stays with you today? I mean, you know, Holder came in and ran the U.S. Attorney's Office, which had about 300 lawyers, and I used a lot of his techniques for dealing with people, for organizing staff, for motivating staff. Um, after I left there, and I, I took on jobs where I was running uh, fairly large offices, like the state's attorney's office. Senator Sarbanes um, was probably the, the smartest man I ever met. Um, he was a brilliant guy, and he brought a, a, a very strong work ethic to, uh, to his job as a United States Senator. What are you looking forward to working on here in, the, in Congress? Well, the last Congress was very productive from a legislative standpoint. I don't know that that's going to continue on because, um, you know, the Republicans in the House don't appear to, to have a real strong focus on legislation. Their, their focus appears to be on uh, investigations, especially targeting the Biden administration. Um, so I think we'll be doing a lot of that. I've been assigned to committees like Judiciary and Homeland Security where I think there's going to be uh, an inundation of, of investigations. Uh, and I think the other piece that we, we really are looking to do with my office is to make sure that the, the benefits of the legislation that was passed in the last Congress actually gets out to the people who need to benefit from it. So. There are billions of dollars that are coming through for, you know, expanding the internet, uh, you know, and a variety of types of projects, infrastructure and the like. We want to make sure that uh, that money gets to where it needs to go so people can benefit from that. Uh, and also, I think there's, there's legislation where 
there's not going to be those types of financial benefits necessarily, but they, it's going to help folks. Like you know, negotiating uh, prescription drug costs, for example. So we want to make sure that the legislation that was passed gets put into place and implemented uh, in a way that's, that's very efficient and effective.